and welcome on this special Belmont Journal. Ralph John is an eminent member of our community. He served on multiple town government committees in elected and appointed positions for 25 years. And in particular, he was elected at the school committee from 1995 to 2004, being chair from 1999 to 2001, and also select board member from 2008 until 2014. And mid-November, he has been appointed to the school committee for the remainder of Andrea Preswich's term. Ralph is with us today to talk more about this new commitment. Ralph, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Ralph, can you share with us the reason why you have decided to come back on the school committee? Yes, I've been following uh, events in our schools very closely over the past couple of years, particularly last year during the pandemic when students were out of school for such a long time that it concerned me very much. And I've also been rather fascinated by the school committee in the, say, the past five to 10 years where there was really very quick turnover of membership. Uh, I, an example, I suspect, is the fact uh, that my predecessor on the committee, uh, Ms. Pretwich, had just resigned in the middle of her term. That's very different than what I saw back in 1995. When, when I served, we had people who served very long terms. Uh, several of the members had been on the committee 12 years. Uh, when I was there, Kathy Miller continued to serve after I left and therefore was on for 12 years. I was on for nine. Scott Stratford was on for 12. and marie Mahoney was on for 12. That provided a great deal of continuity and allowed committee members to share a lot of experiences and make sure that new committee members had the benefit of the experience of the older members. And I was hoping to at least bring a little of that experience back, albeit for a very short period of time, just until April 5th. The public schools are currently facing different issues. You focus on the budget and your application, but there's also issues on diversity and hatred behavior, equity, mental health, learning loss. What is your intake on this? I'm still learning about some of those. Uh, I have a great commitment, certainly, to uh, learning, to equity, to diversity. I have a 40-year uh, commitment to, to METCO in our community. We were a METCO family. I have supported METCO uh, financially for things like after-school transportation, which I initiated when I was on the school committee. And uh, I think there are some issues that I'd love to learn more about, and I am just now getting a chance to, to look at those. Uh, in terms of mental health, I have uh, I've been reading about it. I also noticed, at least in my experience, that some of the mental health issues are no different uh, than they were 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Others, however, I have taken the place of things like excessive use of alcohol and dangerous sex practices, which were quite common 10 and 20 years ago, those have gone down. Right now, what the students are talking about is stress and too much work and so forth. Uh, I hope we can look at these mental health issues and try to deal with the causes, not just provide counseling and uh, other things. I think we need to address the root causes of these mental health issues. I noticed one student saying that her mental health problems were a stemming for the stress really that she felt was coming from too much homework and too many after school activities. And yet at the same time, we're proud to announce that we have more after school activities this year than ever before. Perhaps students themselves need to think about how many of those activities they can really take without stressing themselves too much. And hopefully we can begin to address some of those causes of the mental health problems that they face. You had a long list. I'm not sure I've addressed all of those things. Those are the ones that come immediately to mind because of their uh, presence on the school committee agenda. 
Sure. You also mentioned that I have negotiation skills, in particular pointed the current, the current negotiation with the teachers union. Can you share your strategies? My strategy right now, since I'm coming in in the middle of negotiations, is to listen. Um, I have not been on any of the negotiating committees when they started last spring or during the summer or early this fall. So I'm doing a lot of catching up. And I'm trying to read everything. And I'm also trying to listen to all of the concerns of all parties. Uh, my, my negotiation work goes back many, many years. And I certainly negotiated for nine years when I was previously on the committee. And I worked in labor relations from about 1968 to 1980. And the thing I think people should do most when they're in labor relations is listen to the concerns of the other side. In other words, try to find out why the particular employees uh, are concerned about issues and then try to work creatively and hopefully cooperatively with those employees to find a solution that meets their needs and meets our needs as well. Right. Regarding the budget, and accordingly to the superintendent report at the last school committee, Belmont Public Schools per pupil expenditure, as determined by DESI, is in the bottom 6% of the state. Also, the operating budget has not been able to provide additional plan and strategic positions for the last three fiscal years. And the public schools have only been able to maintain services with uh, one-time federal funds. What are your ideas to address those challenges and to develop a more sustainable budget? Well, I think I've, you may know that I've written on the issue of per pupil spending for a long time. Um, we may be near the bottom in per pupil spending. We were near the top in per pupil spending when 1980 started. And then of course, uh, what happened was a couple of things, proposition two and a half, came along and that began to limit what the town was taxing itself on. And secondly, uh, the, the Ed Reform Act was passed and chapter 70 was passed and billions of dollars were spent, sent out to other school systems, not ours, but to other school systems. And when you get that sort of a thing, your per pupil spending cannot keep up with all those other systems. But more importantly, our performance, the performance of our students, has remained very, very high. And I am much more likely to look at what our performance is than to the rate of our spending compared with other districts. It, uh, it just doesn't seem to me to be a great measure, even though I used it when I was on the school committee, it's been a popular uh, metric to use and it often helps get support for school budgets. So in that respect, I have no, no great problem with it, uh, but, Again, I would love to see more focus on what we actually are accomplishing. Now, in terms of the, the budget, uh, I have uh, just seen one version of this budget and I've just begun to get a sense of how much uh, the budget will be. I don't know how it compares to the available budget in the town that is not yet uh, available to me. And I don't, from my experience at least with budgeting in the town, real budget decisions tend to get made in about the February time period when it, one knows how much money is available, how much money might be available in the future given uh, free cash and the close out eventually of federal funding and things like that. So I'm, I'm waiting for that to be able to say uh, what we will need. If I had my druthers, on a budgeting, I think I would put most of my money into hiring teachers. Uh, I think that the most important thing for our students is to get the best possible teachers in the Commonwealth, if not the nation. We do pay our teachers very, very well. They're in the top few percent of the state. And I would like to continue that and hire more of them and make sure that they continue to be the best and the best supported teachers in the state. <clears throat> what is the impact you hope to make for students during the, you, your short term? <laughs> I don't know if I can make any impact on students in my very short term. 
if I had a chance to make an impact, I think what I would do is try to encourage them to figure out what is causing the stress that they're facing and try to deal with the causes of that stress and get back, get back to learning, which they were doing two years ago without this terrible pandemic when they were out of school or only doing school by remote uh, means. I think, I think in general, what I found over my past uh, 20, 25 years is that I think our students are much more resilient and strong than we give them credit for. And I think once they get back into school, get back into the rhythm of school, and also set themselves with an agenda that does not stress them too much, and get back and get interested in the subject matter of the academic program, I think they'll do very well. That's been my message to students for a long time. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to give it, but uh, my, my advice is you are very, very good. There's no doubt about that in terms of comparison to other school districts. You're good students. We are gonna do our best to provide excellent educational opportunities to every one of you, every one of you, regardless of race, regardless of background, regardless of income. And we're also gonna spend enough on special education to make sure that every special education student gets the full advantage of the programs established in their IEP. My wife, my daughter, my sister are all involved in special education. I've grown up with it in a sense. And I'm very concerned that we spend enough and put enough effort into our special education programs to serve those students who need it. Uh, thank you. And also changing the subject a little bit, you surprised some with a sub subsequent announcement that you are taking the responsibility of Chair Roy Epstein's election campaign. How will you be prioritizing your school committee work during the busy campaign season? Well, my school committee work will have the highest priority. I, I guess I need to explain what I mean when I take this position of chairmanship of a campaign. I always get an assurance from the candidate that there will be absolutely no work involved. In other words, I am a symbolic uh, chair. I may pose for a picture with the candidate, but other than that, I will not be doing any work. There will actually be a campaign manager who will do the work and a campaign treasurer who will do the work. And I am simply a, a symbolic presence. Therefore, I don't see that it will interfere one whit with uh, my commitment to the school committee. It will not take any time away. And uh, I, I, I'm happy to be selected as chairperson in a symbolic fashion, but there's only, I only do that. And I have done it in several campaigns. I only do it when there's no work involved and no time is being taken up. Right. Anything else you would like to add about your position, about uh, the future that you see for Belmont Public Schools? Well, I, I, I served for nine years on the school committee. I come from a family of teachers, my mother, my grandmother, my aunt, my wife, my daughters, my sisters. Uh, almost all of them were teachers, so I grew up in a teacher's family. Uh, and I have great respect for the work that teachers do. It's a very difficult job and it's got even more difficult now than it was say 30 or 40 years ago. So I think uh, it's, a, it's a difficult task and one that is tremendously helpful to our community. One of the things I like about Belmont is that our schools have always been and continue to be one of the leaders in the state in terms of the performance of our students. And I think the thing I can do if I can during this few short months is continue to emphasize that, to make sure that the performance of our schools is distributed equitably and fairly across all students uh, and, and addressing all of the needs of all of our students and uh, help in negotiation of contracts with that in mind. And uh, if I can do that a little bit before April, I'll be very satisfied. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your visit. Thank you, Marilyn. Appreciate it very much. I appreciate the time.